After some three and a half thousand kilometers of racing, can there be a sweeter moment for the rider who gets to don the Giro d'Italia's iconic Malia Rosa? Besides the pure physical challenge of a three-week stage race, the man who sits atop the general classification has lived every twist and turn of an epic struggle with their rivals. In recent years, the fight for pink has brought controversial and classic moments aplenty, and we now take a look at some of them in the Giro d'Italia's GC battles. By stage 16 of 2014's Giro, the pink jersey sat on the shoulders of Rigoberto Uran as the peloton braced frigid ascents of the Gavia and Stelvio passes. Uran's compatriot, Nairo Quintana, was set to become the beneficiary of miscommunication over race radio after the race crested the Stelvio. While some riders sat up having incorrectly heard the word neutralization, Quintana and a small group continued to race down the climb. With pictures limited down the descent, it all started to become clearer down the bottom. That looks very much to me like Quintana being led down by one of his teammates. Um, certainly doesn't seem to be any groups being neutralised at the moment. No, and uh, Quintana will be happy with this, uh, the way this has uh, panned out. The question is, where is Oran? That's the vital question that we have not got the answer to at the moment. the one kilometer to go marker and they're already on the 14 percent gradient he's just not let up as you'd expect all the way up this final climb towards the finish he's extended his lead on all of his gc rivals in that group behind uran mike aru all of the guys who he's been trailing for the whole of this race so far there's the line and Quintana is about to take the lead of this race with a stage win. It's certainly his day, and it'll probably be his year as well. By the time he hit the finish line, Rigoberto Oran had conceded some four minutes to his compatriot, giving a GC lead of one minute, 41 seconds to Quintana. The Colombian would go on to consolidate this lead with a dominant display in stage 19's mountain time trial, all but confirming the first Grand Tour victory of his career. Alberto Contador's final Grand Tour victory of his career stands as one of the most impressive, partly because of his complete dominance. El Pistolero seized the pink jersey on stage 14's time trial, catching his Minuteman Mikel Lander on the road, all while overall leader Fabio Aru collapsed. The first challenge to Contador's pole position came on stage 16, with the race leader suffering a mechanical and with Astana continuing to press ahead. At the foot of the Mortarolo climb, Contador was nearly a minute down on the head of the race. 40 seconds now, the gap to Contador, so he is bringing it back slowly but surely. He's on those ramps of 9.4% at the front. They're on some of the steeper sections of the climb. There is Aru, and this is going to be heartbreak for Aru, I suggest. This, in some ways, is going to be a hammer blow for the man in the white jersey, not the man in the pink. Because when Contador gets back, having battled back to a position where he maintains his gap overall, it's going to be Aru that takes a big drink of disappointment when he sees him. Here's the junction in. Alberto Contador makes his way back up to this duo of Team Astana riders. Not content with just riding on. We said if he gets a moment's respite, he can impose himself. And so he's gone. And there was Aru out of the saddle, just trying to match his pace. Can't do it. This is a ride of a true champion. And Contador now. <laughs> almost precociously out of the saddle. Only Lander and Steven Kruisweig could follow the pink jersey, with the former ultimately taking the stage. His teammate Aru, though, would ship some two minutes to Contador that day. While the Astana dual threat would whittle his GC lead down to just under two minutes by the time the race reached Milan, it never looked in doubt that Contador would claim his seventh Grand Tour victory. The 2016's GC battle, by and large, revolved around the trio of Steven Kruisweig, Esteban Chavez and Vincenzo Nivelli. 
by stage 19, the leader's jersey rested on the wide shoulders of Kruiswijk, but a crash on the descent of the Colle dell'Agnello left the Dutchman battered and bruised. For Nibali, who'd struggled early on in the Giro, it was a great time to find his form. While he dropped Chavez to take the stage win, it would be the Colombian who succeeded Kruiswijk in pink. 44 seconds down on Chavez, Nibali still had work to do on stage 20. Just the first sign of weakness from the pink jersey, and a huge roar goes up at the finishing line here. The Italian crowd who've made their way up to the finishing point of stage 20 know what's happening. He's still not in virtual pink. 44 seconds he's got to make up. What have we got on the road here now? It must only be about 15 seconds at the very most between Nibali. But Chavez, his shoulders are starting to drop. Even Valverde is beginning to drop the Colombian rider. I think that this gap, when they go over the top of this climb, will be close, if not in excess of, what he needs to take. And that is the critical 44 seconds. Maybe it won't be quite that much, but it's going to be right in the ballpark. And now the clock is ticking over. I can tell you that uh, Esteban Chavez needs to come in in the next 25 seconds if he is going to win the Giro d'Italia. Where is he on the road? The answer, nearly a minute and a half down, handing the jersey to Nibali at the last opportunity for the Italian's second victory in his home Grand Tour. By 2017, Tom Dumoulin had developed from time trial phenomenon into genuine Grand Tour contender. That said, few had backed him against a Giro field that included Nairo Quintana and Vincenzo Nibali. By stage 14, already resplendent in the pink jersey, de Moulin showcased why he was the man to beat with an assured display on Europa. A poorly timed comfort break just before the ascent of the Stelvio on stage 16 cost de Moulin time and most of all embarrassment. But even after Quintana assumed the lead three days later, de Moulin knew he could count on the final day's time trial to try to overcome a 53-second deficit on the pink jersey. Sure enough, Quintana was no match for de Moulin against the clock as the Sunweb rider jumped from fourth to first in the general classification. In 2018, Chris Froome had been enticed to make a crack at the Giro d'Italia, but soon found out that going wouldn't be easy. Suffering the effects of a crash in the reconnaissance of day one's time trial, Froome had already shipped a minute and 10 seconds by the start of stage nine. Things would only get worse, as pink jersey Simon Yates set about blowing the race apart over the course of the next week. Froome's compatriot would bag two more stage victories, all while the four-time Tour de France winner slipped to three minutes and 22 seconds down. Before stage 19, Froome and DS Nicolas Portal drew up a plan, not only to crack Yates, but overall rivals Tom Dumoulin and Thibaut Pino as well. With a 70-kilometer solo raid, Froome secured the pink jersey and an ultimately unassailable lead over Dumoulin of 40 seconds. The potential of Ecuadorian Richard Carapaz had first become apparent at 2018's Giro, where he claimed a stage win and a second place in the youth classification. A year later, the Movistar rider kicked up a gear, gaining nearly two minutes on his rivals on stage 14 and wrestling control of the general classification away from the pre-race favourite, Primoz Roglic. The question heading into stage 15 was whether Roglic had peaked too early and whether Carapaz could contain Vincenzo Nibali on his favourite terrain. Nibali goes and he knows these roads and he's been waiting and waiting and waiting and Vincenzo Nibali has launched to the great excitement of everybody in Italy right now as uh, Formolo tries to cover it, not able to. Primus Roglic, in standard form, is going to just try and squeeze his way back on. Roglic has hit some sort of difficulty. That could be key. Has he been off his bike? Primus Roglic gets back on, and he's on the wrong bike, and this is a crisis moment for Primus Roglic. Carapaz showing himself to be a very, very strong overall leader of this bike race. 
Having neutralized Nibli's threat and forcing Roglic into a costly mistake, Carapaz showed the legs that would maintain his lead throughout the final week. Heading into the final day time trial, the Ecuadorian sat on a cushion of just under two minutes over Nibali, all but guaranteeing a coronation in Verona as winner of the Giro d'Italia.